this old uh, G GMC van, I think it's 1962. Uh, <clears throat> uh, back in 1979, it was my, um, my uh, home. I left home because I didn't get along with my dad. And, uh, and I got as far away as possible from family because of all the tragedies associated with my childhood. And I, was, and I traveled from place to place and I carried all, everything I owned in it and I put my, had my canoe on top. And uh, uh, my girlfriend and I found this place in 1979 and we we come here to camp and make a base camp for the winter, and we. Uh, and so it become. Uh, yeah, I didn't realize back then, but that was his last voyage when I come up here. This uh, shelter here was built in um, 1979, and uh, we. Uh, it was built in a hurry because my girlfriend and I. My girlfriend was a mountaineer, and we needed to. Uh, make a place, a base camp for the winter and uh, we decided on this because this place here we goes up high up in the snow and uh, uh, but we we didn't have any much tools or materials. I, I spent a lot of my life, out, most of my life outside so in, in the winter time I, I, I often come home cold and wet and so on and I, my sleeping uh, I wanted to have a little place that I could sleep and have a stove in it so I could uh, uh, have the place warm in five minutes or so and, uh, and go to bed. So that's, uh, you wanted to build a temporary shelter out in the mountains or something, just lay some large poles on the ground. And We have lost that concept of manhood and growing up and all that somehow, you know. Like you don't have that extreme whatever it is to push you out in the world. At one time it was a young fella go to sea because he couldn't get along with his father, for instance. And that's natural. That's natural to be uh, to be forced out of the nest. Just like the grizzly bear beats up her cubs, you send them away, you know. Give them a good beating and then he won't follow her around anymore, you know. And we're, we are our natures the same, to be ousted out of the nest at a certain... But with, uh, with all the uh, infrastructure and all the, all the industrial whatever makes us, makes us so that we don't have to grow up, right? We don't have to go it on our own, whatever. So it's, uh, to me, life is do or die, and then, then you're living. You know, when we look at the past, we see the good parts of it, eh? And, and I'm telling you, the good parts. And, uh, you know, I had spent a lot of my time uh, in, in them good years where, you know, I was depressed about stuff and thought too much about what's happened to the world and so on. And uh, believing in uh, and uh, realizing that I'm helpless. If I don't have a cheap landing job, I'm... Uh, what am I going to do? I'm getting too old for it, and, and I don't believe in it. So, when I started growing food, I, I, uh, I just I come to realize that this is really important to feed uh, my family and my friends and and people around me, and that the way, our, the way I live isn't ideal. It has uh, it has its um, it's drawbacks. It would be much better if I had my farm all in one place and I could look out on it and go out there and see my cattle every day, but I don't have that. So I make the best of what I do. Yeah, yeah, I figure uh, working from the heart and working with a sense of freedom is, sure, it's backwards. Yeah, if you want to call it that. Yeah.